Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our program brought to you by Calhoun's. It's going to be a hit or miss week weather wise this week. A little rain out there, but when the sun is coming out, when those breezes start to blow, get yourself to one of the great decks or patios at Calhoun's. That means Lenore City, Oak Ridge, Maryville, or right on the river in downtown Knoxville. Calhoun's, it's a taste of Tennessee, and it's no better place to taste it than outside in that some in that warm summery Tennessee weather. All right, we have a ton of balls coverage today. As I mentioned, more on the draft, but I want to remind you that coming up, we're going to talk UT hoops, get you some insight with uh, VFL Lou Evans, going to be joining us, and also Mark Pankratz is going to talk a little about the SEC and how it's improved. So let's race. Uh, Chuck Cavalleris is right over there at our big board. There he is. Um, and what we're going to do, Chuck, I'm going to have you mark the green, it's a good spot, or the red, it's a bad spot, a uh, little icon. But the guys here on the panel, we're going to discuss here first, Derek Barnett. And Daniel, I want to start with you. Taking the first round, 14th pick overall by the Philadelphia Eagles. Your thoughts on Derek Barnett? You're an ex-defensive lineman. Goes high, mid middle of the first round. Right. Your thoughts on where he landed? Um, the more I look into it, the more I love it. Um, you look at you know just history. You break Reggie White's record, then boom, they're going to the Eagles. So as a Vol fan, I think you have to love that starting off. But then I think you look at Okay, well, what about the Eagles' defense? What about their pass rush? You know, if you, if you look at the general statistics, you're not going to find much that really support anything. But when you look at by efficiency how they are, they're the third highest team pass rush grade in the NFL as of about uh, December, late January of last year. And they did that while only being 30th um, in, in blitzing. So, th you know, they're, they're, they do it low. So if you're Barnett, you're not a guy that I want to move inside, that I want to run on stunts or anything else. I want him to be on the edge. I want him going. And you know, they lost, uh, I think it's Connor Barwin, who had 50 and a half sacks that they're trying to replace this year. And he joins Brandon Grant, Fletcher Cox, Vinnie Curry. And so I think uh, you got to love it, especially with the defensive fit. Somebody came prepared. A <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> little, little something extra one. in the check this <laughs> week, Daniel. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm going to go the other way on one of the things you said. I wonder, they have already started the hype on. He's the next Reggie White, he Philadelphia. Yeah. 2.0. Philadelphia is a tough place to play. That, they booed Goodell. Yep. They booed Santa. And everybody boos Goodell, but they booed him <laughs> lustily. <laughs> right. um, that's a rough place to play. And if you start getting compared to the best pass rusher, and one of the best pass rushers in history, if not the best, well, that, that's tough shoes to fill. So for me, that would be my only concern. I think money-wise, he's got to be happy. I right. think where he went, as Mike said in the first segment, he's got to be happy. But I would be a little leery of the whole expectations weighing you down because I don't care how good he is, it's going to be tough to be Reggie White. It is, yep. but I think the thing that's nice for him too is he's got great guys to be around. You know, again, if you go back to the efficiency rating, uh, Brandon Graham is the second highest efficiency def or pass rusher at the defensive end position behind uh, Broncos guy who I'm losing my yeah, Von, Von, Miller. Von Miller. And so if you're talking about a guy that I get to learn from that's able to do some great things rushing off the edge, okay. put me behind that guy. He cheated. Chuck, I, yeah, he did research <laughs> as opposed to just getting out of bed. I don't remember a player in the mock drafts being going so many different places as Derek Barnett. I mean, he was all over the place. I'd be careful as how well if they run the ball at Derek Barnett. I like the, I like the position and the place, okay. but there is not another next Reggie White. Okay. Up next, Alvin Kamara taking round three of the New Orleans Saints. Had to be disappointed. Other projections, as you said, had him in the first and second rounds. He lost a lot of guaranteed money. Yep. Once you get out of the second round, the guaranteed money goes. And I tried to point that out on Twitter, and people were like, will he get his second contract? Maybe. Most players in the NFL average three years. That's just the way it goes. Uh, he probably, had he gone in the late first round, probably would have been looking at 10 or $11 million. Not all guaranteed, but that would have been the deal. Instead, he's probably looking at 3 or $4 million. I'd take it, but that's a $6 million drop just for falling in there, and the guaranteed money is gone. Uh, but the Saints seem to be a good fit. Bob, Mike Strange, your thoughts on Alvin Kamara to the Saints? I think it is a good spot for Alvin Kamara because of Drew Brees. And one of Kamara's big strengths was come out of the backfield, catch passes, line up in the slot, go out, on the, go out and run routes. And so with the quarterback that he's got, I don't think they drafted him to be a running back because, I mean, he's going to go in as their third running back. But you've got Ingram and yep. you've got Mark Ingram Peters. And some fellow named Adrian yeah. Peterson. Yeah, yeah, named Adrian the Peterson. <laughs> so I, I think there's not a lot of pressure on him to go out and perform big time. He can come out and do what he does well, which is run a little bit, catch passes, and also probably be a punt slash kick returner. I think Sean Payton will move him all over the field, like, we, like we used to say Tennessee should do it. Uh, Mike Strange, your thoughts on Kamara to the Saints? Very, very similar. Uh, 
you think, wow, they just got Adrian Peterson, but he's Adrian Peterson hadn't got, I don't think, a whole lot left in him. Right. So if Kamara can survive that, he'll be around. And I think Sean Payton is a really good offensive mind, and for a guy like Kamara that's versatile, I think I think that's a nice fit. Yeah, you know, the uh, I saw some folks that were saying he could be a three-down back. I never saw him as a three-down no, back. I, I still either. don't. And, and the reason, and I know it's been pointed out, that, well, look what he did at Texas A&M this year. That's true. That's the SEC versus the NFL. I watched Travis Stevens, who was on our show after the Florida game. Travis is this big. He's small. He led the SEC in rushing. It was the best season I've ever you've ever seen out of a Tennessee running back. He didn't have a thriving pro career because he's just not yeah, built for it. Fit. Yeah, so Kamara, it's one thing to carry the load in Knoxville. It's another thing to carry the load for 16 weeks in the NFL. I think NFL. this is an excellent fit. I think it's the right fit, and I think he's built more like a Shane Vereen almost identical to Shane, as opposed to a Marshall Falk. I had that comparison the other day. Falk weighed 15 more pounds. If he wants to be a running back, he needs to bulk up. What about Darren Sproles? You remember the Super Bowl team, what they did yep. with him? And they've been looking for a Sproles ever since. They have, yeah. and that's, that's one important. of the things I was going to Chuck, say. just give me a real quick one. I'm going to let you talk about I'm going to give a check. Surprised that the uh, Saints did not go defense, but I think it's a real good situation because the Saints are going to have to outscore a lot of people. Okay, we're behind already. Let's go to uh, Josh and Chuck on this one. Cam Sutton. Surprise me again, Cam Sutton round three to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Good landing spot. Yeah, I liked it a lot for Cam Sutton. I thought that he was going to end up with a franchise that's just quality, well run. I thought it'd be the Steelers or the Patriots, a franchise like that of where Cam Sutton would end up. So the Steelers, they've drafted uh, very high in the draft last year with a corner and safety early, but they still continue to work to upgrade their secondary. I bet Cam Sutton ends up being a starting slot corner for what they do defensively. People talk about him being a zone corner first. Well, that's a good thing because Mike Tomlin never comes out of the zone. That's all he plays, period. Uh, it's a great fit, and, and I hope he does really well there. And we've talked about the Tomlin connection with Coach Jones, too. And, and you mentioned in that first segment, I think it was you, the Steelers, I mean, if you're looking at those, those and you just said it, those yes. franchises that are steady, that yes. are perennial playoff teams, he got the right one. They, they, they're really good to, to talent evaluation year after year after year. All right, very good, guys. When we come back, we're going to do the same thing with those other names. Reeves, Mabin, Malone, Dobbs, all good fits? Or might somebody have gotten a bad fit? We'll discuss. Come on back on the Sports Source.